welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I, uh... Thanks for having us. <laughs> Hello! Welcome, here comes the Weirdo Parade. I am Skix, and I have some wonderful guests with me for today's episode. I have the Whistling Swans. Uh, would each of you introduce yourself, please? Yeah, I'm uh, Kaden. Uh, I'm the guitarist for the Whistling Swans. I'm Haynes. I'm the singer and lyricist, uh, and I use they, them pronouns. And I also use they, them pronouns. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so uh, we've got that in common. And that uh, actually brings us fairly naturally to my first question, what I, what I ask of all my people, as much as you're willing to share, what are some of the ways you're a weirdo to the society at large? What in, or if I wanted to be a bit more poly sci about it, in what, in what ways are you uh, an outsider or, or uncentered in the, in the world, as far as you're willing to share? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, gender is certainly probably the main one for me. Um, I don't know. I, I have also just have a, a large feeling of being an outsider um, just due to the way that I was raised, I guess, being like raised in a very religious community and not feeling uh, particularly religious um, and living in a very religious state and not feeling particularly religious is another large part of feeling like an outsider. Uh, yeah, I'll jump in. I got a list. <laughs> um, I, I identify as a disabled person. Um, I have both physical disabilities and I am neurodivergent as well, um, which a lot of my lyrics are about being neurodivergent and physically disabled. Um, I am bisexual. Uh, I'm non-binary. Um, you know, I love to be different. I love to be a weirdo in all of these ways. Um, yeah, that's that's my list. <laughs> all right. Um, you're. We're all in good company here. I'll, I'll put it that way. I may have to interview myself at, at some point. <laughs> um, and we. I mean, we, we'll get to the performance part, but. Um, what are some of the ways that being a weirdo is challenging in our society? And what are some of the ways it's been empowering or, or a positive experience? Yeah, um, I don't know. Finding employment as someone gender nonconforming uh, can be difficult. And I don't know, it, it's hard to feel safe presenting the way that you want to present um in a lot of situations so for me it's taken me a long time to find just like employment that i felt safe to be myself at um i'm thankful to have that now and to have a support system um that's accepting and supportive um i don't know i i think that the benefits are definitely um uh, uh, it's not boring, is what I'll say. <laughs> I would hate to be boring more than anything. <laughs> um, I guess the challenges that I uh, encounter the most would be accessibility issues, um, as well as ableism, which kind of go together. Um, just uh, being sort of a sort of newly uh, disabled individual, I, I have an orthopedic condition, which I have had my whole life, but it recently got worse. And so I've had to navigate uh, that and had to navigate um, still being a performer while not being able to be a mover necessarily. Um, and it's been a little bit strange because a lot of people knew me before, um, before I used a cane, before I, you know, walk with um, a mobility aid. And so it's been surprising for some people and uh, a lot of people uh, thought for a while that my cane was a prop that I used. Um, and in some ways it is. It's a nice um, cane. Yeah, I love it. It's my favorite thing in the world. Um, but it's been, yeah, it's been interesting to see. There's been people who are extremely good um, about providing accessibility. And then there's other cases 
you know, where it hasn't been. So I love working with other weirdos um, because they get it, even if it's not someone who has the same challenges that I face, um, you know, they understand that there are uh, things that I need that other people don't need. Um, so that would probably be my my biggest one. <laughs> And, and in what ways has being a weirdo been a positive experience or oh. if it has? Yes, it has. It has also been a positive thing. Um, I believe in saying, I guess, communicating um, things that can be hard. Uh, I think, I think um, particularly my medium, which is lyrics and songwriting, I think songs can be written about anything and should be written about anything, um, you know, including things like self-harm, including things uh, like neurodivergency um, and things that people maybe don't normally want to hear someone sing about because <laughs> they're not pretty. Um, but I love uh, being able to share those things. And if, you know, even one person likes my song about OCD, then like, great. I love that. <laughs> That's what I love about being different. Yeah. Um, as I, as I, I kind of said previously, I would, I would hate to be boring. Um, and I don't know, I think one of the greatest virtues is being truthful. So finding your own truth and presenting it is very important to me. Thank you. Uh, I find when, for me, when, when I'm willing to step outside the front door, sort of presenting as a weirdo, that, that, that's a very two-edged sword, um, at, at least, uh, you know, in, in Utah, uh, everywhere. Be yeah. Because part of me has a, a bit of fear about safety, um, you know, and I, I have been verbally, you know, uh, People have, have shouted and insulted me. Um, I haven't been physically uh, accosted or anything. But on the flip side, when I make that choice, I have then kind of forced myself to not hide. From there on out, I, I just take that option away from myself, um, which can be really empowering. Uh, and as a, an elder weirdo, that that can be a, a somewhat fraught experience. Um, I I think I've been hiding my light under a bushel, to use a, a Bible phrasing, mm -hmm. um, for a long time, and so it's really hard. And it has to be very much for me, at least, a conscious choice. Um, yeah. And and I I very much admire the younger folk coming up who. Um, from the outside anyway, it looks like you take to it naturally, uh, perhaps more than I feel like I do. Um, so I, I, I love I love working with you two and, and the other weirdos um, and talented weirdos makes it even cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the talent. Uh, tell me separately and or together uh, about your, your journey musically or artistically in general. Yeah, we started playing together, I don't know, once we met like seven years ago, right? 2016 is when we started writing songs together. Um, we kind of, as a partnership, are a weird partnership uh, in that, here, I'll, I'll hold while I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. In that um, I come from a classically trained background with a bachelor of music degree in vocal performance. Um, and Caden uh, taught themselves pretty much everything and is very much a by ear um, player. So we kind of have had to meet in the middle um, and they have made me a lot better uh, of a musician at listening um, and just using my ear. Um, so that's like kind of a kind of Part of our weirdness is we come from both both uh, sets, both sides of the track, as it were, uh, of the musical world. Um, but yeah, we started writing together in 2016, and I will let Kaden talk some more. Yeah, 
You, well, I just wanted to say you also make me a better musician Uh-oh. because <laughs> I don't know music theory very well. Um, and you are very patient and teach me. So, um, yeah, we've kind of had to like establish our own, uh, I guess not establish our own language, but like find avenues of communication to, um, you know, present ideas and, and like work through songs. Um, usually we have somebody who's kind of in charge of a song if whoever's bringing it and then we'll kind of break it together um but um yeah it's been really fun we have like an album that we've been working on um slowly but surely (laughs) yeah our technically our debut album is all written um we just need to record it and we are in the process of doing so it turns out that's the thing that takes the most time <laughs> and the most and money and the most money <laughs> <laughs> and and how did how did you wind up with the name whistling swans that's a good story actually yeah, one. well one of our previous roommates um uh, he had a book, I think it was called North North American Birds. It was Birds of North America or something, um, some encyclopedic uh, tome of birds. <laughs> and uh, so we just flipped um, pages and picked one randomly. Um, originally, we wanted to be, I can't even remember what the original one was, but there was already a band who had that bird name. So <laughs> we chose again <laughs> and there was no band called Whistling Swans um, and we liked the way it sounded and I love to whistle. So that kind of tied itself in as well. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of fits with the, it's, we're very rooted in like folk. So it, it feels very folksy, I, I feel like. So I think it's appropriate. We don't whistle a, a whole lot but we do sometimes. Here and there. <laughs> um, I actually didn't realize it was a real bird. I'd heard of trumpet sw- trumpeter swans, but I'd never heard mm. of a whistling swan. Yeah, I don't think they're in Utah, which is unfortunate. We should have picked a Utah bird specifically, but Seagull. I think they're like Canada, yeah. Canadian swans maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> We should know more, maybe. maybe. <laughs> it could have been the Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> we could have. I don't think there's any other musical group with that name. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, when I first saw you, you were playing with the Busking Bus. How, how did that collaboration come about? Well, I did a play with Catherine, who is one of the founders of Busking Bus, in the fall of 2019 i believe and so that's how i met and linked up with those folks um and we really enjoyed that last summer being the resident band for busking bus um it was really fun because we got to be part of the show creation as well as performance um and i love one of my favorite things in the world is getting an assignment for a song to write. <laughs> like if you give me like a theme or uh, like a few words. Um, so one of the things I got to do was write the theme song for Lint Eastwall, who is uh... a puppet <laughs> um, sheriff part of that show. Um, and that was one of my favorite things I've ever done still is <laughs> Lint Eastwall's theme. <laughs> it was so much fun to work with them last season. Yeah, and it kind of, um, it's been great to work with both Busking Bus and with like Gonzo and and the productions that you do, just because it's all theater people. Mm -hmm. And we are very much theater people as well as music people. Um, But we really enjoy working with other theater people um, because we we understand that social social dynamic very well. Speaking of uh, musical assignments, um, I, I just, throwing it out there here comes the weirdo parade does not have theme music oh, yet what, what, what do you think i would be i would be so so thrilled yeah that would be that would be super fun and we could uh oh uh yeah uh, my neurons are firing <laughs> okay so by the time this goes to air you will have already heard uh, at least a clip of the Here Comes the Weirdo Parade theme song by Whistling Swans. Yes, yes, I gotta gotta stay focused on this interview and not not start writing the song. (laughs) All right, excellent. Um, 
if you're ready, I think you were going to perform something for this. I, yes. I think now mm -hmm. might be a good time. Sure. Yeah. We were going to do um, a song. I wrote, I wrote these lyrics about my experience uh, being neurodivergent. Um, specifically, I wrote them about my experience with OCD. So let's see. Are you all tuned? This song is called Emotion Connoisseur. <clears throat> Driving by the Masonic Temple The steps are all covered with crows Could there be spies for Nicholas Cage? No one knows Numbers in my head as I'm walking my brain can never be on its own when do i cry more when i'm with you or alone i cannot decipher what i'm feeling all these sensations start to blur I wish you could stop my head from reeling Won't you be my emotion connoisseur Try to flip the switch on obsession My thoughts are shaking me to the core I couldn't be here, I live in my brain and what for? What is it that constitutes normal? And how do I advance to that stage? Every day, I still fill myself up with rage. I cannot decipher how I'm feeling. All these sensations start to blur I wish you could stop my head from reeling Won't you be my emotion connoisseur? Can I decipher how I'm feeling? All these sensations start to blur. I wish you could stop my head from reeling. Won't you be my emotion kind of soon? Thank you thank you that was lovely thank you uh and i will say that um at a recent guns are rising you you created some original content too um yes. can you tell the audience at home or kind of describe what what that was because I, I think it was pretty phenomenal yes well it was a um it was the night before easter the show and i really wanted to write some sort of song about jesus um and I, I just on a whim, I thought of the line, uh, if I don't sin, then Jesus died for nothing. And I was like, you know, that kind of sounds like an old, like country gospel sort of phrase. I mean, twisted, but um, so that's sort of what I based the song um, on uh, as sort of like an old, like revival piece, but a raucous heathen number um, instead. <laughs> ah, and it's a lovely song about Jesus. Happy Easter. Ha! 
Happy Easter! Here we go. If I don't sin, then Jesus died for nothing. If I don't sin, then his suffering was in vain. I like to think our Savior felt the good sins with the bad, so I'll take a shot, cause Jesus already has. What's the use in fretting over sins we may commit? Predetermination has declared us all unfit. Gaze upon my visage, I'm a happy heathen man. Sinning left, right, up and down, according to God's plan. If I don't sin, then Jesus died for nothing. If I don't sin, then his suffering was in vain. I like to think our Savior felt the good sins with the bad. So I'll smoke a joint, cause Jesus already has. Everyone has demons, there are none who are unscathed. Life is hard enough without our conscience being weighed. Eat, drink, and be merry is the best advice I've heard. Jesus died so long ago. To mourn him is absurd. If I don't sin, then Jesus died for nothing. If I don't sin, then his suffering was in vain. I like to think our Savior felt the good sins with the bad. So I'll suck a dick, cause Jesus already has. Yes, I'll take a shot, or two, and three, or four. Smoke a joint, or two, or three, or four, or five. Suck a dick. great <laughs> it was so much fun to write <laughs> in uh in a an earlier incarnation of myself i was uh actually a bible school student oh. and and one of my favorite hobbies was looking up old heresies <gasps> and there there is i cannot remember its name and if i if i can find it before this goes to air i'll put it up here um <laughs> but the, there is an old medieval heresy that is exactly that We've got to sin as much as possible, so oh. so the sacrifice was worthwhile. Um, yes. Oh, parallel thinking across yep. centuries. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, one final thing. Um, if you had a magic wish, if you had uh, the possibility with no limitation on time, energy, focus, or money, what kind of gig or show what would what would be your ideal magical thing to create well we've thrown around the idea of writing a star trek musical <laughs> and um that if we had the time that i think would be like the big project at least in my brain that i'm thinking of and and have it staged like a Broadway musical, yeah. like with a, a very large production of a Star Trek musical. We'd have to get the rights, of course, um, and you know, phenomenal casting, Sutton Foster, you know, the whole <laughs> the whole nine. That yeah, that ultimately I think would be a big thing. Like I would love to write to write a whole musical because um, we've written a lot of songs. We've written an album. Um, but I think, yeah, leaning towards theater um, is something we would like to do, um, just because we identify more um, with the crowd and with the medium. Um, yeah. 
Anything else? I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of hard because I I don't like. I mean, I don't think that I would really enjoy playing like a Las Vegas stadium or I I, I don't know. I I would much rather just play for like twenty people. <laughs> sure, that's always like more fun to me. Yeah, your, your ideal dream for. doesn't have to be. Big. Right, it doesn't have to be large, just enormous. Yeah, so I'm I'm pretty happy just to play and live in relative anonymity. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, just it does like make some to write music. <laughs> it does make some things simpler. Yeah, um, <laughs> as as we've seen in current events, being famous means people are going to be right in your business. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what's next for Wishling Swans, or for each of you separately, if you have uh, solo projects? What's coming up? Uh, mostly just our album. We are working on, we were going to self-produce it, but now we're talking about options and hiring a producer, but that costs money. So we have like a 10 track album um, that's planned, 10 track or so, um, that we will be hopefully producing and releasing eventually. So that's that's the next one. And then just playing shows as they come. Does your album have a title yet? It does. The title is Eager Is My Name Now, which is a line from a poem I wrote oh. uh, a number of years ago. Uh, and the, yeah, the take from that what you will, but the theme is kind of mania slash, I mean, both ends of the scale, <laughs> mania and depression. <laughs> Eager Is My Name Now is going to be the name of the album. Um, yeah, and I think it's 10 tracks. And it'll be out on all streaming services when it's out. <laughs> we don't have a date yet, but. <laughs> okay. All right. And if someone wants to keep track of you, is there a place online uh, for them to find you? Yes, uh, we are at Whistling Swans on Instagram. You could search Whistling Swans on Facebook. Um, I have a voice acting YouTube channel, if anyone's interested in that. What? I did not know that. <laughs> I just have one video uploaded so far. It's a new channel, but it's called Haynes Orock VO. Um, and uh, yeah, right now I have a video up, uh, Gender Bend of the Curse of Strahd, um, Tome of Strahd. I am the ancient. I am the land. My beginnings are lost in the darkness of the past. I was the warrior. I was good and just. I thundered across the land like the wrath of a just god. So that's some sort of a fun thing, passion project that I've been working on. Um, but yeah, at Whistling Swans on all media for our music. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm definitely going to look up that YouTube channel, and I, I know if there's only one video, I'll I'll, I'll still be interested. Um, <laughs> and and if we have any following by the time this one hits the air, then go go there as well. <laughs> Find them on social media. If you're coming out of us like a year after airtime, then look look for that uh, album. It it might be out by then. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. If you're if you're watching us ten years in the future, something really weird has happened to society. Um, <laughs> I'm sure but, that's true. <laughs> but that album might exist on a streaming service if those exist, um, or a, or a lost cassette tape somewhere, perhaps. <laughs> I think you should try to create a lost cassette tape, regardless. <laughs> I think it's a must now because I just spoke it into existence. Yeah, yeah. Bury it under a tile in the temple or something. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that does it for us. Do you have any parting words or any questions for me? No. Just thank you for providing a space for weirdos to speak and sing. Uh, it's much needed and it's much loved. So much appreciated. <laughs> well, I, I only created it because I needed it for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I'll uh, see you online and uh, perhaps we'll have a gig together again at some point in the near future. I hope so. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you for this. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.
your thrills and excitement. The Misfit Array. The Oddity Train. The Eccentric Crusade. Hello. I'm one of my dreams. What did it mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm bad.